Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at using iterators and at the iterable interface. So let's say you've got a list. I'll make this a linked list. And this could store any kind of object, but I'll store strings here. And I'll call that animals because I'll put animal names into it. And I'll set that equal to a new linked list of string. And now the normal way to iterate through this list would be to use a for each loop. And um, a for each loop uses the for keyword, as we've seen before. But it's called for each because you're doing something for each item in a list. And in lots of other languages, it actually uses the keyword for each. But in Java, it's for. So I say I declare a variable of the type of thing that's in the list and I put a colon and then the name of the list like this and now I can do sysout animal and of course I need to add some things to my list to actually make this work so let's add some items into my list I'll say animals.add fox and let's duplicate this line one two three that's enough and I'll add in cat, dog and rabbit. So if I run this, no surprises here, it just outputs my list. Now before Java 5 there wasn't this kind of for each syntax and the way to do it was, was using an iterator and iterators still have their uses now which we'll take a look at. So let's, let's put a comment here, this is um, modern iteration uh, which is like um, post Java 5 or I should say Java 5 and later now before Java 5 um, the way you do it was this you take your list and you say iterator and that returns an object of type iterator with capital I, so I say iterator, I could call this it equals my list name, animals in this case, dot iterator, and I'll add the import there with control shift O. Now the reason I can do this on a linked list is because lists implement, and a lot of collections in general, implement the iterable interface. So let's go to the internet here and search for Java iterable. And the iterable interface just specifies that a class should have one method called iterator, which returns an object of the type iterator. And if we take a look at that, an iterator has a method has next, which tells you if there is a next item in the list. It has next, which returns the next item. And it also has remove, which removes an item. So the idea behind an iterator is that it can point at each item in the list in turn. And if I say, for example, string animal equals it.next, and I run that, actually let's, um, let's first, what do I do wrong here? Cannot convert from object to string. Oh yeah, the iterator is actually a template type, so I need to specify the type of thing that it's going to point at here and since I've got strings in my list it's going to be an iterator of strings and let's output this animal here so I'll output the text that I return and I'll just put a sys out here to create a blank line now that will get the first value in my list or at least it should if I get rid of my errors oh yeah I've got two strings called animal here so let's say let's just call this value and finally, I think I can run it. So my output here is this is outputting the first item in my list. And when you call next, it makes the iterator move on to the next item and return it at the same time. So before you call next on your iterator, it's as if this iterator is pointing just before the first item in your list. And when you call next, it's now looking at the first item 
well the next item in your list which to start with will be the first item and then it returns it and the way you normally use this is you normally use it in a loop so that you can point your iterator at each item in turn and use it to retrieve each, each item so to do that I say while it's dot has next and has next tells me if there is another item in the list that the iterator can point at so while your iterator has a next item to, to point at move it to point at that next item and return the item and this will display my entire list here we go now the advantage of this is that you can use it to remove items if you want to so let's say for example if value dot equals cat then I can say okay I want to remove this item so I can say it dot remove so remember when I call it dot next it's going to move it to point at the next item at the same time that it returns that item and I can then say okay if the value that you just returned and that you're therefore pointing at is equal to some particular item then remove that item so if I run that now okay we see um, cat is still output because I'm outputting it before I remove it here but then when we iterate through the list again the second time it's gone from my list so this is coming from my for each loop down here and now I've removed cat and um, I can't do that with a normal for each loop for example if I say um, in a normal for each loop um, animal animals dot remove and I try to remove an item for example using an index like 2 if I do that I get a concurrent modification exception meaning I'm trying to modify the list concurrently with iterating through it and that's not allowed so I can't do that if you want to remove items from a list while you're iterating through it you have to use a iterator and a couple more things to mention here one thing is that um, for each actually uses iterators behind the scenes so if you implement iterable which we'll get on to doing probably in the next tutorial in your own class you can your own collection class you can then use a for each loop to iterate through it and um, so even though there's no mention of iterator here in this modern syntax it's in fact doing this behind the scenes so this is still very much an integral part of Java and the other thing to mention is that if you want to add items to a list while iterating through it then instead of using iterator use list iterator and that will return you a list iterator and list iterator in fact does allow you to add items to your list so if I search for list iterator here Java then we can see that list iterator has a add item as well as remove and it also has a previous method which um, is the opposite to next previous will rewind the iterator to point at the item before the one that it's currently pointing at and that will allow you to add items in before the current item for example okay so that's it for this tutorial and by the way the reason the reason that I use linked list here was because although you can add items or remove items from the middle of an array list it's not efficient to do so and if you're adding or removing items from anywhere other than the end of a list you should use linked list rather than array list okay so that's it for this time and next time we will most likely go on to look at implementing iterable in your own classes so join me again then and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com where you can also find courses on Android web programming and Java Swing among other things and until next time happy coding